Hi, it's Dwyer. May the 11th, 2024. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. Let's talk about boxing. Let's look at super middleweight Christian and Billy. 26 and 0, 22 KOs. Some people are talking about him as being France's best fighter. He trains with Arthur Perturbiev. Let's talk about him. He has a fight coming up against Mark Heffron. One of him, Billy's goals in life, I'm not kidding, is to fight Canelo. Right? Let's talk about it. Let's talk about who would win an Billy Canelo fight. But first, remember, at least who I think would win. But first, remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now let me just say, all of us, myself included, are blinded by highlights. Right? You see a fighter, you're looking at the highlights, the guy has hand speed, the guy has power, the guy has tenacity, He's landing shots because it's a highlight. Of course, he's successful landing shots if he was the winner. Uh, the guy takes out a brave opponent. Um, you look at the guy's age. You see the guy is still in his 20s. You hear the guy talk. The guy is driven. The guy is hungry. And you think, you know, this guy is going to go places. You know, the guy calls out fighters, right? Mentions big names. Canelo, you say, wow, that is a big name. This guy's brave. This guy has hair on his chest. And then you wonder, wow, how would this guy do against Saul Alvarez? Well, as I'm going to talk here, we all have limits. And I mean this, right? You know, um, all of us will convince ourselves that we're going to turn over a new leaf, uh, we're going to keep the office clean, whatever it is, right? The uh, living room clean. And then you find out that after a couple of days, you just can't do it. You're, you're not that guy, right? Some of us think, hey, I'm going to start living right. I'm going to limit my calories. I'm going to eat a certain, you know, diet. Um, then, let's say a weekend, you say, forget this, I'm not that guy, I like the guy I was, I'm going to go back to who I was. Now, I need for folks to understand that those same principles, reversion to the mean, they call it in statistics, apply to boxing, right? Mike Tyson put it best, everyone has a plan until they get punched in the mouth, right? Now... Christian and Billy, again, 26 and 0, 22 knockouts. It's hard to find better highlights. The guy is cut up. It's hard to find any body fat on his body. You hear him talk and you think, wow, this is the hungry fighter. No matter what success the guy has had, no matter that the guy is world ranked and a lot of people are looking at him at 168 pounds, the guy just sounds hungry. You get the feeling the guy just wants to be a great fighter. You get the feeling that he looks at Arthur Perturbiev and he thinks to himself, well, this is possible. Right? And of course, I can't fault any fighter who wants to fight the best. Right? One of the things I love about Perturbiev is that he's a guy who's literally taking on the Callum Smiths of the world the um, Anthony Yards of the world, now the Beavils of the world, right? He, you know, Joe Smith in New York City, right? This is the champ who, you know, you look at him and you say, wow, you know, he's taking on, you know, the top shelf in the division. He does not want the belt if he's not legitimately the champ. And he's proving it to you in every fight. And the thing is, guys like that have ecosystems. They have younger fighters looking at them and saying, you know, that's the guy I want to be. Right? We get it. Here's the catch. 
First, and Billy is fighting a guy named Mark Heffron. Now understand, we're going to be blunt here. Heffron's record is inflated. What do I mean by that? In his last fight, he fought a guy who, going into the fight, had at least six consecutive losses. Right? Only in boxing can you do that and then somehow fight for a minor title, which is what the Mbilly fight is supposed to be for. Understand, too, Heffron, who needs to be alpha, fought and lost to Jack Cullen. Right? Cullen has a lot of things going for him, but Cullen is not a big puncher. In fact, if you look at Heffron's record, you'll see that Heffron has been stopped three times. And Billy is one of boxing's premier stoppers, right? Again, 22 KOs in 26 fights, unbeaten record, 26 and 0. Right? Given that in Billy is a knockout puncher and he's fighting a guy who's been stopped three times and at least one of the three wasn't by a big puncher. Right? One would imagine the fight, even though it's a 10-round fight, not a 12-round fight, one would imagine that the fight won't go the distance. And Billy, of course, is a huge favorite, prohibitive favorite. You're not going to get a lot of value taking and Billy simply to win. Right? You're better off buying long bonds in the U.S. economy. Okay, cheap shot, cheap shot. But, let me just say this. Because of Mbilly's limitations, right? Because of things at 29 that he can't change, and because Heffron, whatever you think about the quality of his opposition, particularly in his last fight, uh, the fact that Heffron has a punch, to me, makes him, believe it or not, the guy I think who's going to lose the fight, the betting side of the play. Folks, you're getting something like 13 to 1 on Heffron. Understand, both of these guys see themselves as alpha. That's important. It's as important in analyzing fights as it is in watching these true crime shows. Right? Both of these guys see themselves as alpha. Both of them are going to try to put their X on the pocket. They're going to try to own the pocket. These are the guys who come looking for you. Right? If you stand in front of them, their first thought is, great, I don't have to chase this guy. Right? These are the guys who see themselves as sluggers. So you have to ask the question, and it needs to be asked. Does M. Billy, against a slugger, who's going to show up prepared to throw bombs in the pocket, right? This is the fight that needs a bomb shelter. Is M. Billy the kind of guy against a guy who has nothing to lose, right? Understand, Heffron coming in, he's like a 13-1 to underdog. No one expects him to win. If he lands a couple of big shots, that's an accomplishment. Against this type of fighter, is M. Billy defensively blessed, where he can make the other guy miss while he is throwing his bombs? To me, the answer is no. I know boxing has eager promoters. I understand that we're looking for prospects. We all want to be Christopher Columbus. We all want to find that new world, that new fighter who's going to, you know, enable us to bet on him for at least the next three, four, five fights, put money in our pocket, that underrated guy who's going to shock bookies, who's going to shock more highly ranked opponents. Right, we're all looking for that guy. And I understand Christian and Billy, big fan base in France, right? Fan base in Canada, fan base among the cognoscenti. You hear these boxing pundits saying, oh yeah, Christian and Billy, oh man. You look at the guy, he looks like a boxer, right? He comes in, he doesn't have a Larry Holmes body, he's cut up, right? Holmes, I mention him here because he's a great fighter. 
<laughs> and Billy is a prospect, right? Uh, I would rather have a guy who has some body fat, who doesn't look like he's straight out of the gym, who's a great fighter, than a guy who looks the part but isn't the guy. Right? Because then Billy gets hit with shots. Because you have fights like the Rowan Murdoch fight. Please look that fight up. You should see red flags all over the ring in that fight. Murdoch, who is outgunned by him, Billy, and Billy wins the fight. I'm not saying he doesn't, but Murdoch land shots. Murdoch uh, turns it into such a dust up that and Billy looks tired. And this is a guy who has not gone 12 rounds in a fight. And Billy's tired in the middle of the fight against a guy who he should have had outgunned. Right? You look at him, Billy, and you realize, wow, this guy can be lured into a shootout. I want you to think about the best Westerns you've ever seen. Right? Understand, you know that cowboy who comes into town who might not be the best, you know, draw in the West, who, you know, might not have the best accuracy, right? But he's looking for a shootout because he understands when the bullet starts flying, he'll take his chances. The other guy might not. That's Mark Heffron. I don't believe a slugger with heart should be a 10 to 1 underdog against a Christian and Billy. Right? And Billy, who wants to fight Canelo, a defensively blessed fighter, a guy who's gone 12 rounds against, well, recently Jaime Munguia, right? Cost me. I thought Canelo carried him personally, but, you know, no knockout, no payday for me in that fight. Maybe I'm bitter. But Canelo's gone 12 rounds with a Jaime Munguia with a Golovkin, right, with a Beevil. In other words, Canelo's been in there, rough and tumble fights, uh, a fight he lost, right? And he's going 12 rounds against top-level opponents. Munguia enters the ring unbeaten. Beevil is still unbeaten. You remember Canelo against Callum Smith, who entered the ring unbeaten. And Billy hasn't fought anything close to the level of opposition that Canelo has fought, and Billy doesn't have anything close to the um, defense that Canelo has, and Billy's a hooker. Now that works when you're not top gun, right? When you're fighting opponents who, you know, aren't prepared to deal with your fastball. You and I know the difference between contenders and champions is that most of these champs know how to deal with your best punch. You have to get off plan A. You actually have to move to plan B and plan C. You actually have to have a plan B and a plan C. The problem with him, Billy, is he is all action all the time. He's coming to find you. He's trying to hurt you. He's leaning into punches. He's throwing hooks. Right? Against a champ. That champ is going to know the fastball is coming. You have to have off-speed stuff. You have to catch guys by surprise. You know, Jaime Munguia took Canelo's left hook. He wasn't, look at the combination that puts him down. He takes the left hook. He just wasn't prepared for the fact that Canelo throws a right uppercut right after the left hook. Right? Let's just say, too, that when you're fighting a Canelo, uh, you shouldn't be in there trying to take left hooks. You should be in there trying to avoid his left hook. Just food for thought. Floyd Mayweather's not going to stand in front of a Canelo with the game plan of, I'll brace myself for his left hook. Well, here, I'll just say this. And Billy, as hyped as he is, and he's hyped, 
is in with another slugger. I want you to look at the success that Rohan Murdoch had in, in Billy's recent fight against him. Folks, sluggers only have to be right once. Heffron has an 80% KO ratio. Right? Heffron wants a shootout. To me, the odds are ridiculous. I expect them, Billy, to win the fight by stoppage. That's part of my hedge. My base bet is going to be Heffron simply to win the fight. Not that I expect Heffron against a hype prospect like him, Billy, to win on the scorecards. Right? But if I'm getting 13 to 1 odds, I'm not going to be greedy. I'll just take the guy to win. Right? I'll handle it if the guy wins by knockout and, you know, I didn't maximize the bet. That's okay. If I'm getting 13 to 1, I'll be a happy camper when it's time to collect. But, folks, Heffron is one and Billy mistake away from a major upset. And Billy is not defensively blessed. He's going to be there to get hit like he was in the Rohan Murdoch fight. Let me say this too. One of the problems we have in boxing is we can't differentiate between great highlights, which in Billy has, right? Guys hitting the canvas, guys looking hurt, and great fighters, which is who Canelo is. I know Canelo's 33. Okay, guys are going the distance. You and I know that Jaime Munguia fight Canelo at times looked like he was a big brother, in my opinion, later in that fight, letting little brother, you know, live for another day. But I'll say this, you know, what happens when Canelo, who's a blessed puncher himself, is in the pocket with Mbilly and he knows Mbilly's throwing hooks? Right? Canelo also knows he has ring coverage. Folks, Canelo... Canelo has ring coverage. Canelo can hurt you without throwing hooks. He has a great left hook, but he has a straight right hand. Right? And Billy, 5'8 and a half. Canelo, shorter than that. More importantly, Canelo can fight shorter than that. Right? I think and Billy would be food for Canelo. Because while he's the younger guy, and while he throws hard punches, and Billy is a blessed puncher with both hands. I don't mean to diminish the guy, right? I think what we would find is that Canelo, who's a master defensively, would understand where to position himself in the ring, where he wasn't standing there getting hit with Billy's hooks. Then I think Canelo would understand that Billy's not defensively blessed, just like he hit Jaime Munguia, dropped him with an uppercut, right? Same uppercut he drops Billy Joe Saunders with. Canelo would be using an opponent's over-aggression against him. Canelo has that skill set, right? You're going to be over-aggressive. Okay, here's the left hook you prepared for. Oh, here's the right uppercut that you're unprepared for, right? Canelo's putting punches together, dissuading guys from being hyper-aggressive who, let's face it, because of Canelo's punch, they shouldn't be hyper-aggressive against him to begin with, right? I know Callum Smith injured his biceps in his fight against Canelo, but one of the things that impressed me about Callum Smith against Canelo is Callum Smith figured out Hey, I can't be walking forward against this guy. I need to be backing away from the pocket. I need to force him to actually move his feet and to come find me. I believe if we get the Terrence Crawford Canelo fight, Crawford's not going to be leaning over the pocket like Billy Joe Saunders. Crawford's going to force Canelo to come find him. Right? I want people to look at the Crawford Yorkies Gamboa fight. Right? Gamboa, smaller guy than Crawford. Right? Crawford backs away at times in that fight, right? The big uppercut that Crawford hits Gamboa with, Gamboa's following him, walking into it. 
right? Callum Smith figured out in a fight for survival, right? Callum's fighting that fight with one hand. But Callum Smith figured out, look, I don't want to be on my front foot predictably against Canelo. Christian and Billy at 29. I believe it's too late for him to figure out that he needs a back foot. He's been successful walking forward, knocking guys out. I believe it's too late to explain to him that some of the guys he's going to fight at this level, world-class level, are going to have defensive skills, are going to want him throwing punches so they can counter him. If he's a hooker, they're going to be too far outside for him to throw hooks. Right? They're going to be too far outside because they'll want him then walking toward them so they can prepare a multi-layered attack. Right? Uppercuts after left hooks as Canelo had prepared for Jaime Munguia. So, to sum up here, I believe in Billy is a bit predictable. Right? Great interview, great story, great highlights. Right? Not enough back foot. He can't win slow rounds. Right? I like fighters where, you know, the action dies down a little bit, right? You know, the their strategy going on. You're looking at the guy, um, and the fighter can just in the course of the action win a round where nobody gets knocked down. Right? Where the fighter can click on cruise control and win rounds, bank rounds, until there's a dynamic where the opponent realizes, wow, I've got to do something here because I'm behind on the scorecards. With Mbilly, Mbilly's all action all the time. Right? If you're on a course that has turns, you can't keep the car in fourth gear all the time. Right? So 29, I don't care who his trainer is. Right? He can have Abel Sanchez suddenly show up in his corner. And, you know, he can have the best trainers in boxing. Robert Garcia show up in his corner and say, Hey, player, let's do these things. Hardwired guys are hardwired. If you make it to 29 and you haven't developed much of a back foot, guess what? The best trainer in the world is not going to give you one. So let's enjoy this and Billy situation as long as it lasts. Just understand, when I look at a Benavides, right? I'm just naming guys who are big time sluggers, very high KO ratios, just like in Billy. Right? The public views Benavides as a slugger. Right? Understand there's much more to a Benavides than that. Right? Just look at his fight against David Lemieux and ask yourself, why can't Lemieux land a left hook? Look at the defense that Benavides has. Then you realize the revelation that Benavides, the slugger, is defensively blessed. That when Benavides gets deep in the pocket, and you don't want to be deep in the pocket with Benavides, but if Benavides gets deep in the pocket, and if you're a Lemieux who believes in his power and is throwing bombs, says, okay, hey, you want to fight? I'm here. I'll be your Huckleberry. It's throwing bombs. Then you notice that stuff's not landing. You notice that Benavides, who has a poker face, is blocking every left hook. Then you realize, wow, I'm I'm in <laughs> I'm in the pocket with a world class fighter. This guy is a problem. I don't believe Mbilly has that level of defense. I think this is an action fighter with holes in his game. I don't believe any slugger with an eighty percent KO ratio like Heffron has, twenty four KOs, he's thirty wins, three losses, one draw should be going off 
at a greater than 10 to 1 underdog against the guy who has defensive holes, against the guy who got tested at times by Rowan Murdoch. Again, he wins the fight. My only point is Rowan Murdoch is landing big shots. There isn't the comfortable margin of error that I like to see. Right? I like to see a Canelo against a Jaime Munguia where Jaime's a blessed puncher. But you notice Canelo's rolling away from shots. Canelo's blocking shots. You know, Canelo never looks dazed and confused in that fight. So, in a fight in which I expect them Billy to win by KO, to me the betting side of the play, in other words the mispriced side of the play, is Heffron, who's going off at 13-1. to I like Heffron at 13 to 1. I'll hedge the play with him, Billy, by stoppage. Understand, because I'm getting 13 to 1 on the Heffron side of the play. And Billy by stoppage could be expensive. It could even be a minus 500. I'd be able to take some, right? In other words, if I bet 10 bucks on Heffron at 13 to 1, I'm looking at winning $130. So at that point, I could then throw, you know, if I wanted to break even, $50 on Mbilly by stoppage. And if he gets the stoppage at a minus 500, I get the 10 bucks back. So I get a swing for the fences with some level of insurance, provided, of course, this is the risk involved, that the fight doesn't go the distance with Mbilly winning by decision understand the risk involved those are my thoughts let me hear yours in the comment section of this YouTube video if you believe and I understand and Billy has a fan base I understand and Billy is very popular in France I understand he's very popular in parts of Canada right Canada of course has some French speaking parts if you believe and Billy would beat Canelo and Canelo admittedly is four years older, right? And Canelo's last few opponents have all gone the distance, although I would argue Jaime Munguia dropped in the fourth round. Uh, it took a lot of patience on Canelo's part for that fight to go the distance, right, to go 12. Uh, I would argue Jamel Charlo is in a track meet. He's running away from Canelo. He gets dropped in the seventh round. Had he stood and fought, I think Canelo probably catches up with him. Right, John Ryder dropped, gets off the canvas, is able to make it to the distance. In other words, Canelo's dropping guys. Let's not pretend that suddenly Father Time has Canelo losing all his punching power. Right, I think Canelo would feast on this guy. If you feel differently, tell us about it in the comment section of this YouTube video. Thanks for stopping by.